Hi, this is Andrew Reversa with Impact Soundworks, and today I'm showing our newest virtual instrument, Shredded Drums. We created this library to be the ultimate weapon for rock and metal acoustic drum sounds, and we created it in collaboration with the award-winning, legendary Frank Klopacki. You might know Frank's work from video games like Command & Conquer, Dune, the recent Grey Goo, Rise of Immortals, Star Wars Empire at War, the list goes on and on. Frank engineered, performed, recorded all of the drums in the library, as well as created some custom produced presets and kits. So we could not be more proud of this release, and I think you'll really like it. Before I jump in and walk through everything in this very powerful interface and engine, I just wanna show some of the sounds that come with the library out of the box. So let's say you don't wanna do any mixing, you don't wanna change any mapping or settings, you just wanna load a kit and play. Here's the default preset. Now I'm gonna run through a few of the other presets. Anything that is prefixed with FK is a Frank Klopacki signature kit. So these are really cool. And then all of these other ones are uh, ones that we've created that beta testers have created. And they really range from you know very natural sounding dynamic kits to uh, super processed. So let's check out, for example, dry and tight. How about Frank's needy kit? That's just a small taste of what comes out of the box with this library. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the default again, just because it's a nice balanced preset. So what you just heard in terms of the MIDI data, uh, those are four different MIDI loops, just four, that come with the library. And uh, in total, we have over 700 different MIDI grooves that were created and produced by Groove Monkey. Uh, Groove Monkey produces all sorts of awesome MIDI drum grooves and fills in different genres. Shredded Drums includes just a small bit of four of their libraries. So that's power rock, progressive, hard rock, and metal. Um, there are different tempos, time signatures, different feels like a triplet feel, double time, half time. So we think that uh, between all the different fills and grooves that come with the library, you'll have plenty of material to inspire your own tracks. So now let's dive right into the interface. In the upper left, we have the visual kit. So by clicking on any of the drums, you can hear what they sound like. And then for example, if you click on the snare rim, you actually hear the uh, rim shot. Or for example, the ride bell versus edge, the hi-hat versus the pedal, etc. So that's just a quick way, for example, maybe you don't have your MIDI keyboard hooked up and you just wanna quickly preview what it sounds like. Now by double clicking on any drum, uh, you'll notice that down here in the mapping area, it jumps to that key. But we'll get back to that later. For now, um, what I wanna show is the mixer next. You've already seen the preset menu. And uh, while we do have a nice list of presets that come with the library, we're gonna be making more. We wanna encourage you as a user to make your own kits and send them. Uh, drum kits can be saved in Shredage's own NKA format. So if, for example, you make a kit and send it to a friend, they can load it from this menu, uh, the load preset option. So the FX only option allows you to load just the mixer and effects rack settings as opposed to the mapping and drum selection as well. So let's say we pull up the uh, dry and punchy kit. Now, uh, let's say I like those drums. 
I could then load up the Giant, which normally has the very low tune drums, but here uh, we're using the same drums as the Dry and Punchy kit. If we take this off and then we just load up the Giant again, you'll hear that the drums are changing too. So that's a handy option. You can save presets if you really like a particular mix or effect settings, you can save that and then you can load it as effects only without changing your custom mapping. Uh, and let's go to, how about Solid Direct? I like this one. So taking a look at the mixer down here, um, this is really, really powerful. Uh, if you've used other drum plugins before, you'll note that uh, the mixer is usually huge. It takes up the whole screen, it tends to be very complicated, uh, lots of buses, sends, routing. We have all the power of plugins like that, but it is in a much more intuitive and streamlined interface. So you see down here, there are six buses. We have the kick, snare, hi-hat, and toms, then the overheads and room mics. Over here, uh, there is the master channel, and this, is, this has its own volume, stereo, and effects rack. By default, uh, if we take a look at, let's say the kick channel, we can change the panning. We can change the volume. Mute and solo. So uh, let's say for this particular one, let's turn up these for a second. I'll get to that. So now we're hearing the kick going through the overheads in room. But if I solo the kick, we get that nice, uh, pure, direct sound. Um, you can also unload a mic position if you're not using it. This actually purges it from memory, whereas muting just just mutes it. We also have a pretty incredible effects rack, and these are all tools that are designed specifically for drum processing. So we have a uh, nice analog modeled compressor, uh, tape saturation and warming, and this can be really, really driven for special effects, a transient designer, a uh, four band parametric EQ, and then a convolution reverb with a selection of custom impulses like uh, venues, plates, and drum rooms. And this gives you a huge amount of control. Now there's an effects button above each bus. And what that means is that each bus has its own separate settings. You can have an EQ on the snare that's different from the kicks. You can have a convolution reverb on the toms that's not on the room. Uh, it's really, really cool stuff. Uh, let's take a look at the snare sound. I'm gonna solo this so you can just hear the direct. We can uh, you know, scoop it out for example or darken it. Now if we turn the EQ off, that's the natural sound. Uh, with the transient designer, this is really nice because let's say something has, you know, it's just ringing a little bit too long, you can turn down the sustain. It makes it a lot snappier. You can also boost the attack, although it can be a little fatiguing to the ear if you turn this up too much, so you wanna be careful. But it is nice for an extra pop. Uh, the tape saturation, again, this is sort of a, uh, it can be either very subtle or way over the top, depending on what you want. So it's just a little bit of gain and warmth. It gives a little bit of that subtle harmonic excitation and saturation. If we turn up the gain more, it adds even more distortion. You can also roll off the high end here, make it a little bit more dull, depending on what you're looking for. Um, the compressor is pretty self-explanatory. We've got everything you need here. It's got a few fixed ratios going all the way up to uh, 10 to 1. So with some more extreme values like this, you can add a ton of uh, real punch and pop to the sound, especially in combination with the transient designer. And then for the convolution reverbs, as mentioned, we have plates, rooms. So here is the airy plate preset with the wet turned pretty far up. You can also filter the reverb from the interface. If you want it darker, if you want a shorter tail. So you might have noticed I was tweaking these controls before, and this controls how much overhead and room sound goes to these channels over here, whereas uh, these control it for everything at the same time, these sliders. So for example, uh, let's say I wanna keep the kick really dry. So that's like 100% dry, but then I want the snare to have a bit more uh, stereo room and stereo overheads.
you can do that. It's just one knob, really easy. Um, this is most commonly used for the hi-hat. I really like, for example, giving the hi-hats a bit more of that stereo. We can increase the stereo width, in fact. And the toms as well, so you might want toms to be very dry and direct. Or you could have them very wide. That's all with just those knobs. Now let's say you turn everything up. You get the full sound of the overheads. And then turning this down will turn everything down simultaneously. The advanced button down here, when you click it, it gives you uh, even more granular detail. So for example, here we have the ride and symbols. Everything is 100% going into the overheads and room. But let's say, for whatever reason, we want the crash to be mono and just the hi-hat mic. You can do that. And the hi-hat is still 100% going into the overhead and room mics. Uh, it was actually a feature request on VI Control. We were happy to implement that. Uh, realistically, if you're recording a drum kit, you couldn't really do that sort of granular level of control. But because this is a sample library, uh, we want to let you mix to your heart's content. So the last two things to note in the mixer, we have a master effects rack. So this affects everything, all the different buses. All the buses flow into the master, so you can EQ the whole kit. You can compress the whole kit, which is obviously great. Um, it's very commonly done. You have like a master compressor. And in fact, uh, a New York parallel compression can be done. You can um, turn the mix to 50% and then really compress the whole kit like this. Uh, but we also have the ability to send these buses to external contact outputs. So you could have in your DAW or host program, you could have the snare going to one output and the kick to another. So if you want to use your own effects, you can do that. Uh, and if you do route these to other outputs, then they will not go through the master effects because uh, we figure you're going to be using your own effects. Next up down here, uh, you saw this just briefly, the mapping tab. With shredded drums, you have total and complete control over mapping. And we're actually really proud of that because some libraries lock you into a certain mapping or they might have, you know, four or five different options, maybe general MIDI versus V drums. This way you can create whatever mapping you want. And it's actually extremely simple to do so. Down here, I have two kicks. Uh, let me turn down the, <laughs> the room again. There we go. Okay, so we have two kicks and these are the uh, Frank Lepecki produced uh, Maple 20 inch kicks on these two notes. On this note, I want to have a different kick. Here we have the drum selector, and this is uh, custom made for the library. It allows you to browse all of the different drums and articulations, and you can assign any of these to any key. You could go to uh, produced kicks, and maybe I'll grab the 24 inch produced kick that I made, and I can put that on that B. This note is still the same. And then maybe I want to change this one to a, I'll click on the Thunder kit because this is one of Frank's uh, kits. We can change that to a 14 by six steel flam because why not? You can do anything you want with this. And then once you have the mapping that you like, you can save it as a custom preset and you can load it later. You can share it with friends. Uh, you can also clear all of the mapping if you click this button, although I'm not going to do that here, of course. You can also select notes via MIDI or by double clicking on the drum up here. So I click the MIDI learn button and let's say I hit that note on my keyboard. That's a C2 and you can see that's mapped to the heavy metal uh, maple 10 inch tom. And maybe I want to change that to the thunder maple 18 inch. The MIDI learn is really useful if you have a drum triggering setup, like a V drum kit or something like that, and you're not sure exactly which trigger is mapped to which MIDI note. So you just click this and you hit the note. Oh, okay, that's uh, G2. So there you go. And again, double clicking on the drums will link to those individual notes. The other thing you'll notice is that you can control the volume and tuning of each individual note. I'm gonna map the same kick here. I'm going to produce kicks to my 24 inch maple. I can, for example, on C1, uh, let's say this one, I can make this lower tuned. Or higher tuned. Or softer or louder, whatever you want. Uh, this is independent of 
the drum piece that you have loaded. So here I have the same exact piece, the same articulation, but different volume and different tuning. So again, it's really useful. Uh, we also have a grid mode for mapping. So if you click this button here, you can see everything that's loaded at once. Um, personally, I use this if I know I have a certain layout or a certain kit I want to create, way of visualizing everything at the same time without having to click on each individual key. Click on E0 and assign that to you know the open hi-hat, and you'll see that is reflected in the grid. If I go back here, you can see now it shows up as being mapped. The uh, blue keys are mapped. In the global tab, uh, this is where you can set options that affect the, uh, the whole kit. Most notably, we have the velocity curve editor. Uh, rather than just having a few presets uh, or a simple knob, this way you can do whatever sort of curve you want. You can do an inverted curve. You can just do a flat curve if you want everything to be at the same velocity. Sorry, I'm really bad at drawing. <laughs> uh, so because I'm bad, I have an expand button here. And now I can zoom in. And let's say, all right, I really want to get that line. Perfect. Okay. But we do have presets too. We have a light touch, lighter, lightest. So that is if you have a very heavy keyboard and uh, normally you have to hit it really hard to get those high velocities. Then we have heavier presets. We have floors and ceilings that cut out the low velocities altogether. And we also have this knob, which is velocity to volume. And what that does is uh, when it's all the way up, high velocities will make the notes louder. When it's all the way down, velocity has no impact on the loudness of the notes. So if you want a kit to have a very consistent sound, usually for rock and metal, like if you're doing drum replacement or triggering, then you might want to turn this, you know, maybe to here so that it's not quite as, um, the, the volume doesn't fluctuate as much. Of course, you will still get the different articulations as you play them back. So you can see I was going back and forth between uh, low and high velocity there, but it sounded pretty consistent in terms of volume. Then we have transposition for octaves. You know, it's very useful depending on your MIDI keyboard if you have a small one. Uh, humanization, which uh, adds a little bit of sort of humanized velocity dynamics to each note. Then we have a global limiter as well. Probably the most interesting thing we have here is the bleed mixer. So some drum plugins, even very powerful ones, only give you limited control over the bleeds. Shredded drums, you actually have total and complete control over that. Uh, let's demonstrate this. I'm going to mute the overheads in room. I'm just going to play the, the kick and the snare. So if I turn off the bleeds, you can hear that the kick all of a sudden, it's missing sort of that buzz. And that's because the kick was going into the snare mic and being picked up. And we can change that exact amount. So uh, I'll turn it on. You can hear now the kick is uh, buzzing through the snare mic. And then we can also do that with the toms and the hi-hat. Of course, too much bleed is usually going to sound a little bit messy, a little bit lo-fi. So you want to do this uh, sparingly, but it is an extremely powerful tool. Same goes for the snare. Uh, let's do... So there you go. So you can do this for each of the direct mics. You can do it for the kicks, snare, hi-hats, and toms, and they can bleed into any of the other mics however you want. Between this and the mixer, there is no limit to what you can do for drum mixing. You're literally getting everything that you would have if you were actually sitting in front of the Pro Tools session in the studio. It's awesome. Last but not least, we have the drum tweak area, and this is uh, incredibly, incredibly powerful as well. So I'm gonna change the preset just for fun. Let's go to the uh, chunky trigger. So the drums that are highlighted in red are currently loaded. So here we have the kicks, the 20, 22 inch and 24. And then the snare is the 14 by six maple. Got four toms out of uh, six possible toms. And on the next tab, symbols, we have all of the symbols loaded. So by clicking on a drum, you can control all of these parameters, either for just that one drum or all drums of that type. So I'm gonna uncheck this. We'll play the kick. We have the kick in and out mixer. So this is the, uh, the sub mic versus the beater mic. So 
usually I like to have a combination of both, uh, but depending on what kind of sound you want, you might want a really uh, very subby kick that doesn't have a lot of click and high end to it, or you might want something that's a little bit more on that uh, sort of snappy end of the spectrum. Then you have volume, panning, and tuning, all of which are pretty self-explanatory. And then we'll click this to return everything to the default setting. We have envelope controls here. So let's say we want to make the kick really tight and punchy. We can reduce the release time and the decay. And now it's just very, very clicky. And uh, let's say we're editing our toms. We get the mix that we want down here. Maybe a mix of direct and overheads and room, but we wanna sort of spread it out in the stereo spectrum. Uh, I could move this one far left, this one maybe half, this and this the opposite. So now we have our Tom panorama spectrum. Of course, that's a little extreme, so maybe we reduce it, something like this. Or whatever combination you want. Or maybe you want all of the toms to be centered. You could just click all toms. And now you're editing all of them at the same time. You can also edit drums that aren't loaded, but of course you're not gonna hear that because they're not loaded. Uh, let's take a look at the snare. We have two mics, top and bottom, which you can seamlessly blend between. Once again, we have release, decay, and attack. So I'm just tapping the key lightly. Or we could do a very tight sound. Same goes for the cymbals, same exact thing. Uh, you could have crashes that are loud or soft, ones that are tight, or not, and then you can always return them to the default very easily. So that pretty much sums it up. That is Shredded Drums in a nutshell. Uh, we're really, really proud of this release and how much power and functionality we've managed to get in a simple, easy to use interface. Uh, whether you're doing all of your mixing internally using the uh, very powerful mixer down here, doing bleeds, creating your own custom mapping, tweaking individual drums, or if you just wanna use presets and the included MIDI grooves, uh, no matter what your expertise level is as a engineer and as a producer, uh, we think you're really going to enjoy this library. Shreddage Drums is available now exclusively from Impact Soundworks, and it's available for both contact and contact player, so you don't need any other software to get started with this library. It comes with both 16-bit and 24-bit versions, depending on what you prefer. And through the end of June 2015, you can get this library for as low as $99. That's for contact and contact player, no other software required, and that's for Shreddage 2 owners if you have our guitar library. If you don't have it, no worries. It's only $119, still an incredible deal. And the list price uh, in July 2015 and onwards is gonna be $139, still an awesome deal considering how much amazing content you get. MIDI grooves, preset kits, raw and produced sounds, uh, this incredible amount of material. Again, we're really proud of this one and we think you're gonna love it in your own rock and metal tracks. So once again, this is Andrew Aversa with Impact Soundworks. I'll see you next time.